Hi, welcome to MA342 Lecture 5 in Topology. Um, what I did last time was explain what a topological space is, uh, gave the axioms for it, very simple axioms, and I gave some examples. And I also talked about uh, topological space being connected or not connected. Uh, I want to say a little bit more about um, those two uh, topics today. So, uh, firstly, I want to start with one example that I should have covered last time. It's called the trivial topology. So, given that its name suggests it's very easy, I should, I should write down one more example of a topology. It'll do as a way of uh, reminding us what a topology is. So, um, let me just start off with an example then of a topology or a topological space. So, let's consider we have a set X. X can be any set in this example. You can be any set you like. Just to make it concrete, let's take X to be Rn, the collection of all n tuples of real numbers. But X could be any any set for this example to work. And then you will let T be the following collection. Well, let it consist of just two subsets of X. Namely, let T be the following collection, consists of just the empty set and the subset X, which is a subset of itself, uh, and that's it. And that's an example of a topology. Uh, a topology. So let, let T consists of just uh, those two subsets, then that is a topological space. Then the set X with that particular collection is a topological space topological space and we call it the we call t the trivial topology on x Trivial topology on X. So that's the word I'm defining. I'll underline it. Trivial topology. And now let's just see, can I get any feedback? Um, who can remember what it means for a topological space to be connected? Let, let me just say it in words. Let's just remind myself from last lecture. A topological space is connected, so X is connected, if you can find two open subsets of X called U and V, such that the union of U and V is equal to X, that U intersect V is empty, and that neither U nor V is the empty set. So if you can do that, we say that the... Um, Sorry, we, if you can do that, we say that the space is not connected. Apologies. If you can do that, you can, we say that the space is not connected. Otherwise, if you can't do it, we say that the space is connected. So, um, in this example with the trivial topology, is X connected or not? Can anybody tell me in the chat? I'm going to say the space is or is not. So it's one or the other. The space... Uh, let me do it in red. Oh, everybody's saying connected. Fantastic. So, the space X is connected. You can't write it uh, as a union of open subsets, except in the trivial way. So, again, uh, I think I ended off last lecture with the discrete topology, which had the collection T being all possible subsets of X, uh, and we saw that... Um, the discrete topology was not connected, but the trivial topology is connected, but usually we're interested in some topology midway between discrete and trivial. Okay. Um, now, w whenever you look at uh, a theory, like you, you've done linear algebra and you look at vector spaces, you don't get far without having to discuss the notion of a sub-vector space. 
And if you've studied group theory, most of you, not everybody, but most of you have studied group theory. Uh, I don't suppose, I've never taught group theory, but I don't suppose it's too many lectures into the course where you meet the notion of a subgroup. So topology is no different. Uh, we'd better meet the notion of a sub-topological space, a subspace. So I'll change color, and I'm just going to write down the definition of what I mean by a subspace of a topological space. So let's suppose we've got a topological space X. So let X be a topological space, or more precisely, let it be a set uh, with a topology yeah so imagine that you've got some set X on which we've uh, imposed some topology T so X is a topological space now take any subset subset that you like Y let Y be a subset of X anyone Well, we can make Y into a topological space in a very natural way, um, and I'll explain that now. So any subset Y of a topological space can be considered as a topological space itself. Um, uh, and what, what do I have to do? I have to tell you what are the open subsets of Y. So the open subsets of X, remind, remind yourselves, are all of the sub, any subset in T we call, we say, is an open subset of X. So, uh, how do I define open subsets on Y? Um, in the subspace topology on Y, now, that's what I'm defining. Um, a subset U of Y is deemed to be open yeah. uh, it's deemed to be open let me just write my word open more legibly open if there exists uh, well let, let, me, let me say like this if and only if We can write Y as, uh, so sorry, if, if and only if we can write U as Y intersect some set A where A is a, an open set in X. Yeah, so that's a kind of an important definition with a box around it. And it says that whenever we have a topological space X, take any subset Y and we can regard it as a, as a topological space. We call it a subspace, uh, it, giving it this topology called the subspace topology, where the open sets of Y are precisely uh, those sets U that arise as the intersection of Y with some open set A in X. Okay, so let's let's have a look at an example. Um, well, or maybe I should say first of all, uh, I haven't actually said what do I mean by topological subspace, so I suppose I should say that. Maybe I should extend my box. With this topology, we say that, uh, let, let me do it in black, with this topology, on Y, we say that Y is a topological subset of X, a uh, topological subspace of X. Uh, 
Okay, so that's what we mean by topological subspace. So I guess that's the definition I meant to put a box around. Okay, so let's let's have a look at an example. I'm just going to to have to move to a new page. Uh, example. I have a heater on here. I'm getting too hot, so I've turned the heater off. Um, example then, uh, let's do it in blue. Uh, let's take X to be the real line yeah, uh, with the usual topology. So I'm, remember I called it E for Euclidean distance with standard topology. Uh, maybe I don't need to write that. Let X be the real line with standard topology. Which I'll recall. Uh, so what does the standard topology on the real line uh, mean? In which an op uh, a set U is open. So in which a subset u of x is open uh, if what does it mean for any point x in the subset we can find an epsilon um, such that the the ball centered at epsilon, the open ball centered at epsilon, or uh, sorry, the open ball centered at x of radius epsilon. So, uh, in normal language, that's the interval of all numbers greater than x minus epsilon and less up to less than x plus epsilon. We want that uh, to be in U. Oof, okay, I'm just recalling the real line view with the standard topology. Now let's take a subset of the real line, and one that I a, a, a nice subset to take is the integers. Let's take the integers. Consider the integers. Z. There's certainly a subset of the, the, the real numbers. With subspace topology. Okay. So we can do that for any subset of R. We can, con we can consider the subset the subspace topology. So let's do it with, with Z. Um, then I'm, so it's a topological space. So Z is a topological space. Uh, I'm wondering now, then I, Z, and I don't know whether to put is or is not connected. Is or is not connected. Can anybody help me? Um, I just want to know. So this is a mind exercise now. So, so we have this topological space, the real line. Um, we have a subset Z, which we're giving the subspace topology. And now I'm wondering whether Z is connected. So my question is, can I write Z as a union of two non-intersecting open subsets, you know, non-trivially? Somebody says is connected. Somebody says we got, a, we got two votes. One says is connected and one says is not connected. I need some more votes before I can... I can, um, uh, two says it's not connected. Okay, two say, three say it's not connected. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with not connected. But can, can we see why it's not connected? Then Z is not connected. Uh, because Let me see, can I do it? I'll do it in a horrible color, pink. Um, I'm going to choose two open sets 
Um, and I'm going to say that clearly, you know, maybe that's a horrible color. Let me go back to back, uh, uh, black. And I'm going to say clearly um, the integers are equal to u union v. Um, the intersection of u and v, I'd better have empty. Uh, also, v are open. Um, and maybe I'm going to see, can I give a reason why they're open? Can anybody suggest two open sets u and v such that you, the union of u and v is equal to the integers, the intersection of u and v is empty. Uh, we also need uh, uh, u and, you know, I, I, also I need that u is not equal to the empty set, and neither is v. Can anybody tell me two sets of integers whose union is the whole in set of integers less than zero, greater than zero? Uh, no, that won't do, but it's a good guess. I mean, it's not a good guess. It's a good answer, but it's not quite right. Less than zero, greater than zero. Zero is an integer. So in your two sets, the union of your two sets won't quite do because zero won't be in there. But it's, it's only now a, mi a minor tweak. The sets you gave me, as you said, less than zero, greater than zero, but all the integers less than zero, union all of the integers greater than zero, is not equal to all of the integers because zero isn't in there. Can anybody tweak that example? Silence. Less than one? No. Well, I need two sets. I need two sets. Less than zero, greater less than or equal to zero no it won't do it won't do less than or equal to zero or greater than zero that i don't think that will do because i actually have to certainly less than or equal to zero or greater than zero that, that would give me two sets whose union uh, is equal to z but what i'm going to have to show after this because i'm going to have to convince myself that these two sets are open in other words i'm going to have to find two open subsets uh, I'm, for you, I'm going to have to find some open subset of the reals, A, such that A intersects Z is U. Remember that the integers are a subset of the reals. So when you're defining your sets, you, you can use the fact that we're lying inside the reals. Can anybody tweak the answer so far? Everybody's thinking in terms of integers, but can you just, can somebody tweak one of your answers so that it, it, it's not less than or equal to an integer or less than an integer, but something else? Silence. Point 0.5, that'll do, Point 0.5. I'm going to go with Point 0.5. Well, I'm going to write it as a half. Um, Actually, do you know what? Let me just come back to Eve, Evelyn and Dylan. You, you're actually your answers were right. I'm 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 sleepy today. I'm a bit sleepy today. Your answers were right. Um, your answers were right. In fact, a few of the answers you you can actually do it with. I'm, I'm being a bit sleepy today. Of course, you can do it with the with the integer less than zero, greater than zero. That won't do. But yeah, there were a couple of so you don't like you can actually do it with an integer less than zero greater than minus one. That won't do. But um, the two, D Dylan and Emmett, that you, you, both of your answers are right. And I asked for one which didn't involve integers, but I'm going to take the one that does involve integers. So why don't we just say all of those integers n? We're a bit sleepy today, such that um, n. What, what did you say is less than or equal to zero? And the other one is n greater than zero. Um, 
and why are they open because so now I have to write down um, I have to write down u is equal to the integers intersect now I have to write down some open set can anybody give me an open set in the integers so that u is sorry can anybody give me an open set in the reals such that u is the integers intersect that open set and I also want v to be the integers intersect some open set I'm putting round brackets can anybody tell me what open interval could I take such that u is the intersection of the integers with some open real interval less than uh no no can anybody give me a real a real open interval give me an open interval of reals minus one to infinity mm, u is for you you u is yeah um uh yeah that would do minus one to infinity would do wouldn't it minus one to infinity That would do, whoever said that, Thomas, yep, thank you. Um, that would do because what is u? It's it's all of those um, integers which lie inside the open real, the, the, the open set in the reals from minus one to infinity. No, 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 what are you doing? Uh, sorry, which one are you? Sorry, which? I'm getting confused. That, that's not quite right, is it? I want u, sorry, but, you, but the right idea, so I'm getting confused. For u... Minus infinity, yeah, that's getting better, sorry. And um, minus infinity up to one, yep. That was it. And maybe, maybe what you were so what's what goes down here for V? V is for V. What can I put for V? V is the integers intersect. Whoo, it's slow this. Can anybody give me a, what, what can I write? I want to write V as an intersection of the integers with some open one. Uh, v is, uh, I can't do one. Minus, um, <laughs> ah, I'm just going to give you, isn't it something like a half? Yeah, you're, all, you're all kind of getting there. Wouldn't that do? Yep, that would do, wouldn't it? No, I don't want, I don't want, it's not minus 0.5 because I don't want n equal to 0 in it. So this eliminates n equal to 0, but it includes n equal to 1, 2, 3, and so on. So there we are. So whew, that, that's okay. So that's an example of a, a, a subspace. Yep. The integers are a subspace and uh, then they're not connected, which is kind of fits our intuition. Now, let me... Um, let me talk about connected components because when I was talking about um, uh, the the Jordan curve theorem, I said that any simple closed curve in the plane divides the plane into two components, two connected components. So what do I mean by a connected component? Why is Z connected? On oh yeah, but not here. C great question. Why is Z connected in the cofinite topology but not here? Because a topological space is a set plus a topology. And every topological notion that you talk about with re relation to a topological space involves a topology. So if you change the topology from the cofinite to uh, this you know, subspace topology, it's a totally different topological space. It's like saying, um, if you've done group theory, there are two groups up to isomorphism or order four. You know, if you take the set of four elements, you can impose two quite different group structures. One of them has elements of order four, or the other one only has elements of order two. Um, why? Well, it's because it's got a different group structure. Why is the set Z of integers different here to in the cofinite topology? Because it has a different topology. Does that kind of answer it? it it's, it's all tied in with notions of connectedness are very much dependent on how you define the topology, and here I define the topology differently to with the, with the cofinite one. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, now I'm going to talk about a 
uh, let, let me go to a new page. Um, definition. I want to talk about a connected component. And so intuitively then, a connected component, like the Uchtra Golf Course has the, 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 I call it the main road, the boring or whatever, cutting through it. So there are two pieces to the golf course. You have to cross from one to the other. I'd say there are two connected components. So let me try to define that for you. Um, a connected component of a topological space X the word of defining a connected component of a topological space X is a connected subspace so I can say that is a connected subspace so that hopefully makes sense to you what I mean by that yeah it's a subspace so what's a connected component it's a subspace with the subspace topology and it's a subspace which is connected and we know what that means but it's a bit more than that it's a biggest possible connect connected subspace what do i mean by biggest possible well i write down biggest possible in a in a kind of a mathematical fa uh, fashion uh, such that this is how i say biggest possible such that there is no bigger one such that there is no bigger one how do i say bigger one i say there is no connected subspace w of x which is bigger how do i say which is bigger with y contained in but not equal to w yeah so what do I mean by a connected component? It's a biggest possible connected subspace. Biggest possible means it's a subspace and you can't find a bigger subspace W containing it, which is also connected. Uh, let's, let's do an example. Um, let's... Let's suppose that, um, let's take this one, let X be the following set. Let it be the set of pairs of real numbers Pairs of real numbers, I'm not writing R2, I'm writing E2 because I'm thinking of the plane as being endowed with this standard Euclidean topology in which a, a set is open. If for any point X in the set you can find an open ball centered at X lying in the set. Okay, so that's why I write E rather than R2. And let X consist of all pairs such that X squared plus Y squared is not equal to 1. So let X be consists of all points in the plane which are not precisely a distance one from the origin. Can anybody tell me how many connected components there are in X? I have one person says two. Any other numbers? Any other supporting chat or disagreeing chat so one person has given an answer who agrees or disagrees with that how many connected components are there nobody's going to answer yep okay we're two people have said two that'll do then i'll write it down there are two connected components namely uh, well, we could just take um, one of them could be the subspace consisting of all the points greater than one from the origin. So one could be the subspace of all points x, y in the plane such that x squared plus y squared is greater than one. That's a connected subspace because it's connected and it's a subspace and it's the biggest possible. Um, and also we could take, let's say, Z 
to be all of the points less than a distance one from the origin. Yeah. Um, let's do another example. More interesting example. Let's go back to the real line. So I don't know what color black example. For the real line. I'm going to write it like this, you know, E1, it's the, it's the, yeah, you know, I, 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 okay, I should write it E1, I'll write it R if you like. For the real line R with standard topology, I suspect that in the book Armstrong probably calls that E1 because uh, it's got the standard topology. Uh, we have another interesting subset, the set of rational numbers. Uh, we have the subset Q of rational numbers. It's a subset so it can be given the subspace topology. And my question now is with the subspace topology, this subset of rationals, is it connected or not? With the subspace topology on Q, um, we see that the topological space that we so the topological space Q well now I'm going to say is or is not connected which is it is it connected is it not connected Somebody says not connected. One person says not connected. Anybody else going to vote? The rationals, okay? Somebody else says it's not connected. Okay, so let, let's, let me go with not connected. We see that Q is not connected. So let's do it. For instance, uh, I have to then write it as a union of, of two open s sets if it's not connected. Sorry. Um, yeah, so for instance, uh, let me let me write u equal to, I'll use my horrible color pink. No, I will, let me use a nicer color, what, what, what color, green, green. We can take u equal to something, v equal to something, um, and then I want q is equal to Uh, the u, u intersect u union v etc and and we want the, you know so so uh, what am i going to what am i going to take u and v to be less than pi greater than pi fantastic that'll do yeah yeah less than pi greater than pi let's take u to be all of those numbers x in the real line that'll do one thing we know then from somewhere or other that pi is is not rational okay so pi the number pi is not in q any non-rational number irrational number will do so let's take x to be all of the the real numbers greater than pi um yeah so in other words it's all of the numbers from pi up to infinity and let v be all of the numbers less than pi uh, so that's from minus infinity up to pi and then we see that let, let me the, the, with the let's let's just note that q certainly is um, sorry what, what was your answer 
less than pi um, So what have I done there? So, so I, actually, I, you, you threw me, uh, Patrick, saying less than pi, greater than pi. What, 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 what does that mean? So it's not connected. What, what set? The set of all rationals, less than pi. Okay, so maybe what I'll do is I'll do this. Um, let me call, rather than u and v, this is terrible, isn't it? let me change the notation. Let me call those a and b. And then we'll take u... to be uh, the rationals intersect A, and we'll take V to be the rationals intersect B. And then what we see is that Q is U union V. So in other words, Q is all of the rationals which lie in A, together with all of the rationals that lie in B, Yeah, that's fine because the only number that's missing here, he, he, pi isn't irrational, so that's fine. Um, what else? Um, so then that, and we know that Q intersect A is open in Q. Why is it open in Q? It's open in Q because A is open in the real line. Yeah, A is an open set, so in the subspace topology, A intersect Q is an open subset of Q. Uh, and what do we also know? We know that Q intersect B is open in Q. Do I have any more space? I do. Um, and what do we also know? We also know that... Um, uh, the intersection of u and v, so if I take the intersection of what I'm calling u and v, well that's all of the things, all of the rational numbers that are less than pi together with all of the rational uh, and all, all of those rational numbers which are both less than pi and greater than pi, there are none of them, so that's definitely empty. Um, and uh, yeah, and we're done. And and we know that this is not equal to the empty set, and neither is is v. Whew, okay, Are people happy with that. Yep. Then what I'll do is I'll maybe, I've got 10 minutes, so I think what I'll do is um, I'll go on and talk about another notion which is very important, oh. continuity. What do we mean by a continuous function? So we've had the notion of continuous function in first year calculus, and we used it again in multivariable calculus in second year, differential forms. You've probably had the notion of continuity in metric spaces. If you happen to have studied metric spaces, you don't need to have studied metric spaces to do this course. Um, now let's give you the ultimate definition of continuity, the, the, the topological definition, because topology, topology isn't about topological spaces. Topology is about continuous functions between topological spaces. It's probably the same as linear algebra. If you think about it, linear algebra isn't about vector spaces. You don't study vector spaces really in linear algebra. Linear algebra, what you study, you study matrices, you study linear homomorphisms, you study functions, you know, linear homomorphisms between vector spaces. And also group theory, well, yeah. It's really more about homomorphisms between groups than it is about groups or symmetries. Anyway, um, so topology is about continuous functions between topological spaces. So what I have to get down at some point, and today is as good a time as any, is to tell you what do we mean by continuous function. So continuity, is what I want to talk about. Uh, 
um, continuous defamations, all that. I've used the, the word already. Let's 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 just plonk down the definition, which is a major definition. So you know, let X and Y be topological spaces. Any topological spaces, any ones you like. A function. A set theoretic function f from x to y we'll call continuous now I can only use notions from topology to define this but that's fine is continuous let me just give the definition and then I'll try to explain it uh, by reference to a first year example. So is continuous if the inverse image, let me just write down the, the, the definition, is continuous if the inverse image um, let me write it like this What do I mean by the inverse image? Um, I'll define it in a moment. Uh, of any open set, inverse image of any open, I'll, I'll finish that, of any open set, U in Y is open in X. So let me just explain what I mean by the inverse image. The inverse image so I've got a function f from x to y, and I, I take an open set u in y. By the inverse image, I mean all of those x in x, such that f of x lies in u. That's what I mean by the inverse image. So that is a, a, an important definition, all right. Once you have topological a topolo two topological spaces, and there aren't many axioms uh, to you know to have to check to, to check that you have two topological spaces, you can then start talking about continuous functions. Okay, um, I'm absolutely convinced that if you've not seen a definition like this in metric spaces, it won't make any sense to you at all at this stage. So let me try to make sense of it by giving an example from first year that, that tries to explain it. So, so let's just try to understand um, that. So example, yeah, thinner pen, example. Um, what am I doing? I use blue as well, example. Let's go back to first year. Uh, let's take x to be the real line with the standard topology. So I'm, I'll do it like this, okay? x is the real line, with, like first year calculus. And let's take y to be the real line, as we would have done in first year calculus. And let's consider the following function. Consider the function f from the real line to the real line which is defined as follows given by let's suppose that f of x is equal to well if x is less than or equal to 1 let's say that in this example that f of x is equal to x squared and if x is greater than 1 let's say that f of x is equal to x squared plus 1. Okay. So in first year, what would we do? Given a function like that, we'd sketch it. So let me try to sketch it. Oh, I've got plenty of space up here. Hang on, let me sketch it. Um, so I'm going to sketch this function. I'll draw my y-axis and my x-axis. And I'll sketch the function in in, in black. Um, so it's 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 x squared for 
x less than or equal to 1, the function is y equal to x squared. So it looks, if I can draw it, it looks something like this. And then for x greater than 1, it's x squared plus 1. So it looks something like this. Yep. So in first year, would you say, when you see that, would you, even coming from school, you'd, would you say that that function is continuous or discontinuous? It's a function. Remember that a function has a, so, has a, has a domain and a codomain. Um, and in first year, would you say that that function is continuous or discontinuous? Not continuous. Discontinuous. Yeah, it's not continuous. So now let's just check that it isn't continuous in this sense here, because this sense captures what we were doing in first year in, in a more general fashion. So let's just check then. Um, consider an open set. So this function set, th this definition says for a function f to be continuous, that means that for any open set, any open set, for any open set u in y, the pre-image has to be open. So for any open set in the y, the pre-image has to be open in x. Let's just go down here then and let's just take an open set. Consider the set So, so he, in the, in this in this setup, um, let me just do it in green. Remember, then x is equal to e one, and y is also equal to e one. So, when I talk of x and y, you know they're both the real line. So, let's take an open set in in y. Let's consider the following. Uh, consider the open set U uh, in the real line consisting of all of those real numbers greater than minus 1, uh, less than 2. Um, who can tell me what the pre is? So, so this is an open set in, in, in the real line, yeah, which I'm thinking of as y. Now, What's the pre-image of that open set? Can anybody tell me? Let me go back to blue. Um, the pre-image I'll write as F inverse of U for this particular open set. What's the pre-image? Uh, can anybody tell me? It's all of the numbers in the real line which get mapped to, to minus one between minus one and two. Can anybody tell me what's the pre-image? Hmm, silence. And we only have one minute to go. I might go over a minute just to allow you to think. Can anybody give me the in the the the, the set of of real numbers such that f maps them to between minus 1 and 2. Okay, so minus 1 is here, 2 is here, somewhere, I don't know, where's 2? Two? Um, 2 is, where's 2? Two? 2 is here, isn't it? Um, so it's all the real numbers which get mapped to some value between minus one and two. Can anybody help me? Minus the, very close, very close. Let me write down the wrong answer. I won't mention your name because you're on YouTube, but you're almost there. Somebody tells me that it's, um, somebody tells me that the answer is, and I don't quite ag agree with this. Somebody tells me the answer is minus the square root of two, one. Oh, where's my pen gone? Hang on. Um, why one? Why? So, what is f of so? 
Can anybody correct? What is f of 1? Somebody tell me what f of 1 is. What's f of 1 in the, in the chat? What is f of 1? 1. Okay. So now tell me, f of 1 is 1. So is f of 1 in u? Tell me yes or no. Is f of 1 in u? u is all the numbers from minus 1 to 2. Is f of 1? Yep, yep, okay. Now then, can somebody correct this? The pre-image is not what I've written down there. The pre-image consists of all of those numbers in uh, the real line which get mapped to the interval u. But there's, there's a number missing from this. What's missing? You've already told me one is missing. Yeah, square brackets one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so now I'll just correct it. Uh, thank you. Square brackets one. So what was the point of all of that? I'm going to ask you, is this set here open in the reals? Is that an open set with the standard topology? No. So this pre-image is not open. Let me go back to black. Uh, since this pre-image, since the pre-image of U is not open, this given U, okay, which I pulled out of a hat, is not open. We see then that f is not continuous according to the above definition, is not continuous. Yeah. So there you have it. Um, I better stop because I've gone over. But uh, continuous, the notion of a continuous function is captured by that red box and that subsumes the notion that you met in calculus and also any notion that you met in metric spaces. Uh, that covers, that's kind of, if you like, the most general version of the definition of continuity and it's the one that uh, topologists pride themselves on being able to work with. Okay, before I switch off, are there any questions? Then I'll stop recording and you can ask a question once I record, stop recording. Hang on. Uh, I've...